The G.I. Joes have an anti-armor trooper named Salvo, but did you know there's more than one, a male and a female? Stay tuned as we talk all about Salvo. Thanks for watching JLS Comics. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. I do upload videos just like this every week. All right, let's jump into our story. David Hazel was born in Arlington, Virginia. In Spain, though, he was called Sandy De Witten, though still from Arlington, Virginia. Eventually, he grew up and joined the United States Army, where he passed through infantry school at Fort Benning, becoming a combat infantry soldier with a specialization in anti-armor weaponry and tactics, which, at the time, gave him an 11H MOS. That is until 2001, when anti-tank crewmen were rolled into 11 Bravo, and they were all infantrymen at that point. This gave him proficiency with light and heavy anti-armor, anti-tank weaponry such as the M47 Dragon and the rather prolific tube-launched, optically-tracked, wire-guided BGM-71, otherwise known as the TOW, anti-tank missile. He also knows the way around the M20A1 Super Bazooka replacement, the M72 Law, light anti-tank weapon. David knows the Carl Gustav as well as the AT-4. He's also proficient with man pads, which are man-portable air defense systems, like the FIM-43 Red Eye replacement called the FIM-92 Stinger man pads. He'd also be familiar with enemy platforms as well, such as Estrella and SA-7 launchers. In 1984, the U.S. Army started looking for a replacement for the Dragon and started the AAWSM program, that's an acronym meaning Advanced Anti-Tank Weapon System Medium. They needed a new one-man portable shoulder-launched medium-range tank breaker, and thus the FGM-148 Fire and Forget Javelin Close Combat Missile System was born. And this would be something that David took a liking to once it was deployed in 1996, also at Fort Benning, right around the time that the Polish PZR Grom and the British Starstreak also made their debuts. Most recently, Raytheon and Lockheed's joint venture program is now putting out FGM-148F models replacing the 148E Block 1 models. In 1990, a few years before its debut, David had joined an elite anti-terrorism unit, codenamed G.I. Joe, where he became their anti-armor specialist. He has his favorites, but there's certainly a wide range of armaments that fit within his specialty. For his debut with the new team, Salvo came equipped with a four-stage M202-style multi-shot tow launcher, a distrust of complicated electronic systems, and a The Right of Might t-shirt. Salvo debuted in Larry Hama and Marvel Comics' A Real American Hero comic book series with issue 114 as a counterbalance to Metalhead, who debuted in the same issue with his own set of rocket launchers. The issue finds Cobra and G.I. Joe in the waning hours of the Battle of Benzene. Salvo was with Dusty and Rock and Roll in a hammer trying to punch through a Cobra line, Dragoon style. They linked up with Steeler in a Raider, as well as a Pulverizer, to capture some ground and protect the flank of the Joe's main force. In a benzene town square, they ran into Metalhead, who would shoot and scoot, making it hard for the Joes to come up with a firing solution. Metalhead took out the pulverizer, then ran down an alley, and Hot Seat was about to roll the raider down the alley, but Salvo said, What's the odds that there's an anti-tank mine sitting there just waiting for the pressure fuse to go off? At another square, they ran into Concrete Dragon's Teeth, and Metalhead took out the hammer. Dusty dove and saved Salvo and Rock and Roll from the explosion at the last second as metal had disappeared beneath a manhole cover into the tunnels below the city. Now dismounted and back to their LPCs, Salvo, Dusty, and Rock and Roll grabbed their weapons and chased Metalhead. A Metalhead fired from behind a pile of sandbags while Salvo unleashed another Salvo on Metalhead's position. And I don't know where Rock and Roll was for this scene, but the backblast on Salvo's launcher is likely at least 100 meters with no apparent recoil, that means the propellant gas shooting out the back created a wide 60 degree danger zone. So I hope he was okay. And Salvo's rockets took out the sandbags, and so then Dusty charged Metalhead's position, guns ablaze. And just as they were all about to kill each other, the ceasefire call came in. The Emir of Benzene struck a deal with Cobra Commander, and they were all to stand down. And that's pretty much it for his comic book, A Real American Hero, Marvel Appearances. Salvo did appear, though, in G.I. Joe America's Elite with issue 25 in a group shot with literally the entire roster. It was World War III and a massive 25th anniversary 12-part event. In Aubrey Sitterson's Scarlet Strike Force, Salvo became a Samoan woman. About this, Sitterson said in an interview leading up to the book's release, changing the character's race and gender not only gave us some Polynesian representation, but also helped us dodge some problematic visual associations as Salvo's original look, bald, heavily muscled white guy with giant guns and a shirt that says, right of might reads a little too alt-right. It also presented an opportunity to introduce a different body type into the group, which I thought was important. While there's always been a huge amount of diversity on display, the Joes were generally all built like supermodels and or fitness models. Since Salvo's primary role was going to be carrying around hilariously massive guns, I thought it would make sense to have her built like a powerlifter. 
and even sent Giannis photos of wrestler Nia Jax for reference. There are a lot of ways for people to be fit and healthy, and I'm proud that we've included more of them in G.I. Joe and the upcoming Scarlet's Strike Force, end quote. Because of the timing of Salvo's debut, Salvo didn't appear in the G.I. Joe animated series. He did, however, show up in the Deke series, where he was voiced by Brent Chapman, who also lent his vocal talents to D-Day from Sergeant Savage and his Screaming Eagles. In an episode called United We Stand, Salvo was deep in the jungle with the team while Ambush and Pathfinder on point found a path through the jungle for them. Except that path led them right into the range of Metalhead and Nagahide. Salvo fired a salvo at the two enemies, seemingly losing the slogan on his shirt in the process. Ambush and Pathfinder blew up a Cobra base, but then Salvo ran into Cobra Commander amidst the rubble. The Commander smashed a vial of behavior modification gas right at Salvo's feet, gassing him just as Metalhead was about to shoot a rocket at Salvo, but Cobra Commander stopped him before Metalhead could yell bang. But Salvo fell to the ground unconscious, succumbing to the gas. The Joes brought him back to the base where Stretcher pushed his bed into sickbay where Ambush and Pathfinder were also recovering. Cobra Commander activated Salvo and his eyes were glowing, just in case you didn't know that the influence was bad. So evil Salvo said, I must destroy, and then jumped out a window and stole a helicopter and headed back to Cobra. Cobra Commander demanded a massive ransom or he'd brainwash the rest of the world with his gas, which he just proved could work. And even ordered the Joes to stay on base until they had the money so they couldn't interfere. And to make sure they did, they were doing flyovers. Ambush and Pathfinder, though, since they were on leave, weren't ordered to stay, so they were an exception, and they went to rescue Salvo and free him from Cobra's control. Pathfinder and Ambush snuck into the Cobra base to rescue Salvo, except evil Salvo almost got the drop on them and took out Ambush with a rocket attack from an elevated position. But Pathfinder shot the ledge he was standing on, knocking Salvo to the ground. And they ended up finding Cobra Commander and forced him to deploy the antidote gas, convenient, which freed Salvo of Cobra's control. In the episode Revenge of the Pharaohs, Salvo was working out with the team while Cobra Commander came on the television with its latest scheme. Night Creeper Leader thought he was the reincarnation of a long-deceased pharaoh, and so Cobra Commander introduced him as Pharaoh Night Creeper. He was threatening to blow up the Nile Canyon Dam to flood Pyramid City unless the current government turned over all control of Egypt to the quote-unquote new pharaoh. Led by Lady J, Salvo and the team helped to evacuate Pyramid City, and it looks like he picked up a pet goat in the process. Destro and his forces started looting the now-abandoned Pyramid City, and so Salvo was one of the team to ride out to meet them, launching a volley of missiles at their armored elements to initiate the attack. A couple laser vipers caused Salvo's hammer to crash, and he punched his way out of the rebels, saying, Sticks and stones will bang your bones, not mine. He then fired more rockets at Destro and his Dominator as he tried to escape out of town. Salvo's rockets knocked a massive statue right down on top of Destro, and the statue happened to be a statue of Pharaoh Nightcreeper, and so now the Pharaoh was angry. And because of this, and through a course of actions, a part of the dam blew. Salvo was later with Hawk in the mobile battle bunker, trying to divert the water flow from the dam to save the city. And they were almost taken out by the raging waters, but were rescued at the last minute by grabbing onto the rescue winch of a retaliator helicopter and being flown right out of harm's way. In victory at Volcania, Salvo was at Club Joe on Volcania Island, fishing offshore with Bullhorn, but wishing he'd stayed on land for the football game. But he got something on his hook, which turned out to be Cobra and a Cobra submarine. Cobra's Operation Longbow overran Club Joe, and so both Bullhorn and Salvo were captured. Destro forced the two of them to start building a set of train tracks from the ocean right to the interior of the island's volcano. Cobra wanted to drill down into the earth and use the lava flow to power an elevator which would take their secret lasers to the top of the crater. Yep, there's another simple Cobra plot for you. But rolling in a cart, which Metalhead happened to be riding in, they saw the particle beam cannons and now knew what Cobra was up to. They were able to knock Metalhead to the ground and escape out of the volcano with one of the track carts, like a scene right out of Indiana Jones. Salvo and Bullhorn then stole a rage tank to get further away. They met back up with the Joe team to launch an assault on the volcano lasers, while Hawk led another team up the cliff face on the other side of the volcano. Cobra brought the massive cannons to bear on the Joe's frontal assault force, destroying the vehicle that Salvo was in with a massive blast. Once again, Salvo, along with some other Joes, were captured and forced back inside the volcano. And inside, arguing with Destro, Salvo was looking super short for some reason. Force perspective, perhaps. So Salvo and the Joes were able to drive Cobra back and destroy the cannons and the lava lift. Cobra Commander was swept out to the beach on a pyroclastic flow. Bravo Zulu, boys. Well done. In the Nozone Conspiracy, Salvo was on base with the team trying to figure out why Cobra wanted to steal millions of gallons of shaving cream. Salvo actually asked, do you think Cobra wants to shave the penguins? But that wasn't it. <laughs> 
Cobra wanted to refine the CFCs in the shaving cream containers to rip open the hole in the ozone layer above the Arctic even wider to sunburn the penguins and the other people unless they purchased Cobra's nozone ointment. Cobra branded sunblock that cost $500 per tube. Cobra Commander said that that would net them $117 trillion extra per year. So Salvo headed up to the Arctic with Sergeant Slaughter, Gridiron, Rampart, and the team driving an avalanche too to attack a Cobra Arctic outpost. Inside the stronghold, all Salvo could find were boxes of Cobra Life magazine. Salvo later jumped out of the plane with Sergeant Slaughter and Sub-Zero to halo down to a Cobra base where Ambush was ambushed by Metalhead. Salvo blew open a door for their attack with his rockets. Later, Cobra Commander tried to bribe Sergeant Slaughter with money and a new car, and he said, what kind of car would you like? And then Salvo walked up and said, an armored car to take you to a federal jail. They ended up foiling the environmental disaster plot, saving the world. Captain Planet would be proud. Then he was in quite a few other episodes, though, throughout the season, but was relegated to non-speaking walk-on parts. In early 1990, Salvo's V-1 action figure was released, armed with brown missiles and mines and their launchers, along with his brown helmet. Salvo made it onto the box art for the Joe's high-tech attack jeep called Hammer, firing from a cupola roof-mounted gun turret, which these days should become up-armored and get the OGPK like the M1151A1 variant or maybe even a Crow's system. As a force multiplier, it would allow Salvo to focus solely on his rockets, but hey, it's pretty cool either way. And at least the blueprints say it's computer controlled so he doesn't have to use the handle and brake like on the older models to traverse his weapon as it's now done digitally. But maybe this was Salvo's doing because as we know, he hates computer controlled high tech weaponry. It wouldn't be for another 15 years we get a second release of version 2 Salvo. In late 2005, a direct-to-consumer figure was released now with a gray missile launcher, shield attachment, and an SMG. A third Salvo came out in 2017, and this version was part of the G.I. Joe Collectors Club, FSS, and now he was back to his brown gear. A quote on his file card sums up Salvo nicely. Nothing worse than going on patrol and not finding any Cobra forces. That means I have to carry all my ordnance back to base. And with that, that's a wrap on this one, my friends, the story of Salvo. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe, and you'll be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this each and every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.